Дуже дякую, шановний пане генеральний секретар, шановна секретарі генерал, діа тим of Mr. Stoltenberg, dear participants, media representatives, we welcome NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg in Kyiv, Ukraine, in Ukraine that stands strongly and sees a clear perspective of full liberation of our land from Russian invaders. This visit of the NATO Secretary General is the first one since the beginning of this war, and this is a sign, we consider it a sign of alliance readiness to open a new chapter with new solutions. Today, we discuss four key issues. First is Rammstein, the meeting that will be held tomorrow, and we do expect decisions from our partners, particularly, primarily, on military support of our active actions. The faster our servicemen will be able to on the battlefield, the sooner Europe will see peace. I am thankful to Secretary General for his start of this visit with the two of the recently deoccupied towns and communities. And the victory of Ukraine will definitely save other nations and peoples from these horrible ruins and deaths that the Russians have inflicted, particularly in Bucha that you visited, dear Jens, and in Donbass and elsewhere. The second matter concerns the resolute position of our partners regarding defense matters. I addressed uh, Secretary General with a request to help overcoming some reservations among our partners in respect of supplies of modern armored equipment, military fighters and uh, armed equipment because this definitely affects the results of this war and it will save the lives of our servicemen if provided in due numbers. The third question concerns a NATO summit in Vilnius. It will be a historical event. I'm thankful for being invited there. There is no objective barrier to prevent from making political decisions on inviting Ukraine in the alliance and the majority of people in Ukraine in the alliance member states support that potential decision. The North Atlantic security dimension cannot be imagined without Ukraine now, and people don't understand that. Uh, the fourth question is about security guarantees for Ukraine and its people. On the way to NATO, I repeated that this will not replace the matter of Ukraine's membership in NATO. We need this security already now, and the history proves it, that it is needed not just by our nation, but by the whole of Europe and the world. This undefined situation with security fueled the appetite of the aggressor and security guarantees will make a thorough uh, protection uh, protection for the people of Ukraine or any people in Europe from any potential new aggression. I'd like to thank for this beginning of negotiations. We've just started them. Thank you for your attention. Hopefully, we will continue it together. Secretary General, we will continue instilling peace in Europe and in uh, Ukraine. President Zelensky, dear Vladimir, uh, thank you for hosting me here today. It's really a great honor and pleasure to be back in uh, Kiev and to meet uh, with you. Your p personal leadership, uh, the courage uh, of your armed forces, and the resilience of the Ukrainian people have inspired uh, us all. More than a year on from the invasion, Russia's war of aggression continues to cause untold human suffering. With brutal attacks on homes and hospitals, playgrounds and um, power stations. This morning I visited the Butcha and I was deeply moved by what I saw there. Russian atrocities continues against the Ukrainian people today. 
and those responsible must be held to account. I also laid a wreath at the wall of remembrance of the fallen for Ukraine. I pay tribute to all those who have lost their lives or suffered wounds, seen or unseen, in defense of their homeland. They will not be forgotten. Mr. President, I'm here today with a simple message. NATO stands with Ukraine. We stood by you after Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014. We stand by you today in your heroic uh, fight against uh, the Russian invaders and in defense of your country. And we will stand by you tomorrow as you rebuild and work toward a brighter future for the Ukrainian people. Over the years, NATO allies have provided training for tens of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers. And since last February, NATO allies have delivered more than 150 billion euros of support including 65 billion euros of military aid. This has enabled your troops to force Russia out of Kiev, Kherson and Kharkiv. Allies are now delivering more jets, tanks and armored vehicles. And NATO's Ukraine fund is providing urgent support, including medical supplies, mobile satellite systems, and platoon bridges. All of this is making a real difference on the battlefield every day. We do not know when this war will end, but we know that Russian aggression is a toxic pattern that must be stopped. We agreed on the importance of a just and sustainable peace, and I strongly welcome President Zelensky's peace plan. We must continue to strengthen Ukraine's armed forces, and we must ensure that robust, powerful arrangements are in place for Ukraine's security. Let me be clear. Ukraine's rightful place is in the Euro-Atlantic family. Ukraine's rightful place is in NATO. And over time, our support will help you make this possible. Today, the President and I discussed a multi-year support initiative. This will help you transition from Soviet-era equipment and doctrines to NATO standards and ensure full interoperability with the Alliance. It is a testament to NATO's long-term commitment to Ukraine. NATO stands with you today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. So, President Zelensky, thank you again for hosting me here today. I look forward to welcoming you to the NATO summit in Vilnius in July. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, questions in the Fox Ukraine Information Agency. Alexander Martinenko, Interfax Ukraine. My question is regarding the Vilnius uh, summit to President Zelensky, to Secretary General Stoltenberg. Uh, what concrete steps from NATO will satisfy Ukraine? Will it be a roadmap or something else? This is to Mr. President. A uh, question to Mr. Stoltenberg. Some of the NATO member states would rather not consider Ukraine's membership, not to, you know, bring oil from Russia. How this can be dealt with? Thank you for your question. If you do not, uh, if you agree, uh, Secretary General, I will start. You know, I think your question already has an answer in it. What steps we would expect? We really would expect some steps 
some steps, uh, specific ones, concrete ones, which would be understandable for us, for our nation, for our public, about Ukraine's future. In NATO, we started discussing that with Secretary General. We spoke about us needing something um, bigger, better than the current format of relations we have today. We highly value the huge level of support from the allied nations to Ukraine, but we also would like to know uh, when and how Ukraine might join NATO and what security guarantees will be available to Ukraine on the way towards NATO membership. I'd like to re reiterate and repeat it. We are not preparing for any alternative of NATO membership. We are not considering this as a compromise solution. And my words today go not to our public, because our society clearly understand that. My words rather go to leaders of some countries permanently looking for some compromises to Ukraine's membership in NATO. We will be members in the alliance, and I think this will make specific guarantees of security for Ukraine. And while we are on this way, while we are not uh, members yet, we'd like to have uh, this package approved, and we hope this will happen in Vilnius if the possibility arises. From our side, we will be ready to prepare everything for that. The Vilnius summit will be important uh, for many reasons, but not least because uh, I expect that the NATO allies will recommit to stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes and uh, announce and uh, recommit to continue to provide uh, substantial uh, military support, enabling uh, Ukraine to prevail as a sovereign independent uh, nation. I also expect that uh, NATO allies at the Vilnius summit, uh, with the presence of President Zelensky, uh, will agree to uh, further strengthen uh, NATO's uh, uh, package uh, for uh, Ukraine with even more uh, support. Then, of course, uh, I also recognize that uh, President Zelensky will raise the issue of membership uh, of security guarantees, uh, and this will be high on the agenda of the, the meeting and also in the uh, lead up and the preparations for the Vilnius uh, summit. Uh, Ukraine's future is in the Euro Atlantic family. Uh, Ukraine's future is in NATO. All allies agree on that. Um, at the same time, the main focus uh, of the alliance, of NATO allies now, is to ensure that Ukraine prevails, is to ensure that Ukraine continues to be a sovereign, independent, democratic nation in uh, Europe, because that's the only way to also have a meaningful uh, discussion about uh, Ukraine's future uh, membership. And therefore, the main focus, the urgent need, is the military support uh, to Ukraine, uh, which is uh, something we work on every day. We will we discuss it today. We will discuss it in Rammstein, where we meet in the US-led contact group for Ukraine tomorrow, and every day in the lead-up to, uh, to the Vilnius summit, and also at the Vilnius summit, uh, military support for Ukraine will be uh, a main uh, uh, topic. So NATO has demonstrated that, uh, that our door is open. NATO's door remains open. And then uh, what we do, the, the, the support we provide to Ukraine, is, is, is making a, a future membership for Ukraine uh, possible. Thank you. The last question from Bloomberg. Hi. Mr. President, you touched upon the topic of the next coming meeting in Rammstein. Do you have any special detail to disclose to us right now? And my question goes to NATO Secretary General. Tomorrow you will be attending the meeting. What are your expectations of it? And what do you think NATO might present at the meeting? Thank you for this question. The Rammstein meeting is important. You don't know what Ukraine has been preparing for. Uh, I mean preparing specific steps. And there are messages from our team that will be presented at this Rammstein meeting. Some things have to be pushed a bit to have the relevant armaments to strengthen our army come to our country sooner, even probably sooner than it was scheduled. 
Uh, I will also deem it important to discuss the type of arms that Ukraine has been waiting for that long. Uh, we do expect uh, uh, training for our pilots on mission. We also expect for long-range weapons. We with specific partners to discuss and specific numbers to be sought. And we need to really press for that. At uh, the meeting in Ramstein tomorrow, I expect uh, that the NATO allies and partners will make new announcements of uh, concrete military support to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and that, of course, will come on top of the unprecedented support which, is already, uh, uh, which has already been uh, delivered. Uh, and I expect the NATO allies to do so. Uh, both because it is the morally right thing to do. Um, a sovereign independent nation in Europe, Ukraine has been attacked as a victim of a brutal war aggression, and there, therefore it's uh, Ukraine's right to defend itself, uh, and it's our right to uh, support uh, uh, Ukraine in upholding the right of self-defense, a right which is enshrined in the UN uh, Charter. But it's also in our self-interest, uh, because if President Putin wins, uh, it will make the world more dangerous and us more vulnerable because then the message is that when authoritarian powers uh, like Russia, like President Putin uses forces, they get what they want. So it's in our security interest, it's in the security interest of NATO allies uh, to support uh, Ukraine. Um, then uh, uh, today we have had new an announcements from allies. Uh, uh, Netherlands and, uh, and Denmark are announcing uh, 40 new Leopard battle tanks, uh, and then uh, uh, the United States has announced a new package of 325 million extra US dollars, uh, including more HIMARS and uh, ammunition and missiles for HIMARS. So uh, these are concrete announcements which uh, we actually had uh, today and expect more uh, to come because it's an urgent need uh, to ensure that uh, Ukraine gets the weapons they need. Then we need a constant discussion on different types of platforms. And the support NATO allies are providing to Ukraine has evolved as the war has evolved. In the beginning, the main focus was on light anti-tank weapons like the uh, javelins. Then uh, there was a big focus on, on, on artillery. Uh, then it was on uh, air defense systems, uh, uh, including advanced air defense systems like the NASAMs and the, and the Patriot batteries. Uh, and, and now uh, on the battle tanks, uh, and now allies are also providing battle tanks, and actually allies are also providing uh, uh, fighter jets. We'll continue to discuss and assess what type of platforms. But let me add one more thing, and that is that in addition to discussing platforms, whether we need a new weapon type or not, it is extremely ensure, uh, important to ensure that all the systems, all the weapons which are already in Ukraine, work as they should meaning that they need ammunition, enormous amounts of ammunition. They need spare parts, maintenance, repair, uh, 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 repair capabilities, well. maintenance. So, so yes, we should discuss whether there is a need for new platforms, but, but to just ensure that all the platforms which are there are working as they should is an enormous task, and that will also be addressed uh, when we meet in Ramstein tomorrow. Thank you for your answers. The press conference has been concluded.